Hey Family Crew! Um, it's Jillian and this time we're going to be doing something a little bit different. It's called Love is Strange. It's only the demo. It's only available for uh, computers at this moment. But it's a fan work collaboration as you can see for Life is Strange. And I believe it's a dating sim so we're going to jump right into this. Oh, I've never played it before so I'm so excited! Dayone introduces Max to photo contest. Mm. Oh, oh, we get to partner with someone. Okay, Chloe, yes. So, let's just do this. The atmosphere is always energy of bustling staff. The impatient, hungry truckers perch the lunch counter like hulking, churlish birds on a wire. Ooh, this is written really well. The sleepy locals slumped in their booths over steaming mugs of coffee. I've been here nursing my own coffee for ten minutes now. This morning I woke up to a text Chloe sent at 2 a.m. asking me to meet her at the diner at 8 sharp for breakfast. Oh, it's too early. She's late, of course. Who wouldn't be? I should probably be more annoyed than this, but I'm kind of used to it. Chloe tries, but she's never been able to keep us to a schedule. It's kind of a miracle she manages to make it to her classes on time most days. Okay, so it looks like Chloe in this is uh, still a member of Blackwell, which is really interesting. I suppose this means I should be more worried about asking Chloe, of all people, to help me with my entry for the photo contest. But Chloe's never let me down when I've needed her. Not ever. Hella! And she's not starting today. <laughs> Max! I can't stop the smile that spreads across my face when Chloe enters the diner. Hello. She scans the room, panting a little, looking disheveled. Don't we all? When her eyes light on mine, her face breaks out into a grin of its own, and she makes a beeline toward our booth. Hey, girl! Hey, sorry I'm late. She slides into the booth with effortless cool, shooting me her most charming, apologetic smile. Matt? Uh, no, it's only it's 8 a.m. I laugh, shaking my head and taking a sip of coffee. This is actually pretty punctual for you. I'm impressed. Chloe laughs too, looking visibly relieved. She slumps back into the booth, beaming playfully and knocking her foot against mine beneath the table. Whoa! I know, not bad, right? Chloe grins at me like we're kids again, like we're sharing a secret. Even though I've been back in Arcadia Bay for a year now, there's something about being on the receiving end of her smiles again that still kind of takes my breath away. I can tell I'm staring at her with what must be the dopiest look on my face, but I can't help it. Deliberately, I drag my eyes from her face and scan the diner, licking my lips. Damn! You hungry? God, yes. Chloe cranes her neck dramatically, looking around the diner. Where is Joyce, anyway? I'm gonna die of starvation before she even takes my order. Then she'll be childless, and you'll be partnerless, and my sad, hungry ghost will be forever bound to the two whales. Cursed to haunt greasy truckers and painfully slow waitstaff for eternity. Not so fast, Capster. Ca Casper! <laughs> Chloe snorts. I kick her lightly beneath the table and continue, despite the interruption. Joyce should be out with your food in a minute. It's like flipping a switch. Chloe's face lights up, the previous conversation immediately stricken from her memory. She leans forward, seizing my hands in hers and dragging them across the table. Max, you've been my best friend since we were kids. My first mate, my partner in crime, and now the girl who buys me breakfast. I'm ready to take the next step. Max, will you do me the great honor of marrying me and buying me food for the rest of our lives? <laughs> She's been doing this more and more lately, saying things that could just be joking, but could also be, well, flirting. I just can't figure out if Chloe's being deliberately confusing or if I'm such a colossal social dunce that I can't tell the difference. Chloe waggles her eyebrows, squeezing my hands playfully. Next? I laugh awkwardly, feeling a blush rise on my face, and yank my hands out for grip. Max, no! Who said I'm buying? Chloe pouts, bottom lip jutting out dramatically. You know, I did just offer to spend the rest of my life with you. The least you could do is offer to pay for my... Wait, what did you get me? 
Oh god. Oatmeal! I feel like this is too hard. Um, eggs and bacon. Your favorite, bacon side of eggs. Chloe slams her palms down on the table excitedly. Hot damn, now we're talking. Joyce bustles out of the kitchen a few minutes later, expertly balancing trays loaded with breakfast foods. You know, let's, I'm gonna say, I'm really impressed by people who can do that, seriously. It's hot. Chloe smirks mischievously, mischievously, leaning forward in the booth, no doubt with something cheerfully antagonistic on the tip of her tongue. But the morning rush is so hectic that Joyce barely has the time to set our plates down in front of us before tearing off across the restaurant to attend the family of five that just filled up the last free booth. A blah, 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 blah. Chloe looks briefly disappointed that she lost the opportunity to annoy her mother. At least until she remembers there's food in front of her. Chloe eats with sort of single-minded ferocity, not uncommon in wild dogs. She's got about the same level of manners, too, I remember. Thinking of all the times she'd stolen food right off my plate and unconsciously hunching over my meal when she looks up and starts eyeing my waffles. You gonna finish that? Uh, yeah! Down, girl. I pull my plate closer to my body and wave my fork menacingly in her direction. Chloe pouts, fixing me with her best puppy dog eyes. No. Worth a shot. Chloe shrugs and leans back into the booth. So I bet you're pretty pumped to get started on your project, huh? I bite my lips, shifting my gaze from Chloe's eager face to the window facing the street. I watch a few cars pass, trying to gather my thoughts. I guess I'm excited, but... I glance back at Chloe, unable to stop the smile that tugs at the corner of my mouth. She always knows when there's something I'm not saying. But I'm pretty nervous, too. I still can't believe I actually volunteered for the contest. I can. Chloe says it like it's just a fact. I feel butterflies flutter in my stomach. Ooh, nervous for a whole nother reason now. Confidence has always seemed to come as easy as breathing to Chloe, and I get it. She's tough and beautiful and smarter than she gives herself credit for. Yes, it's true! That all makes sense. But it's her unwavering confidence in me that I just can't wrap my head around sometimes. Oh, this is sweet. Max, you're like the best photographer in school. I know sometimes you get all in your head about this shit, but it's really not so complicated. Of course you're gonna kill it here. I smile gently back, hearing the hesitance at the end of her sentence. But? Chloe smiles bashfully, cheeks flushing just slightly looking up at me through her fringe of blue hair like a kid with her hand in the cookie jar. This is written really good. This is awesome. But it was kind of surprising you asked me to help you with your project. What? Chloe shifts in her seat. The food is gone now. She has nothing to distract her from the conversation, so she grabs a packet of sugar from the center of the table, tearing it open and pouring the contents into shapes on the tabletop. Joyce is going to be so pissed. I mean, there are lots of, you know, good photographers in that class, Max. I basically only took photography so I could hang out with you and Rachel at school a few times a week. Oh, Rachel! Right, so, side note, um, in this little uh, visual novel that they have going on here, they're going to also include Rachel. So this is kind of like they've taken the time element out of it. They've gone back to when Chloe was in school and... Um, you get to romance either Chloe, Rachel, Kate, or Victoria Chase. No word yet if it's poly relationships. I don't know if you can do that or not, but I do know that it's strictly women, and I love it! Okay, anyway, yeah. Chloe, you're my best friend. There's no one else I'd rather have in my corner for stuff like this. Chloe looks up from the pile of sugar she was carefully shaping into swirls in the center of the table. Best friend. Her tone is light, but the look on her face makes me feel like I didn't say quite the right thing. My first mate. My partner in crime. The girl I buy breakfast for. Chloe's face breaks out to a wide grin, cheeks pink. In that case, can I order another? No. Chloe laughs. Worth a shot. So I guess we better get started on this thing. 
rules say you need to take your photo somewhere in Arcadia Bay. You know where you want to go? I'll let her decide. Actually, why don't you tell me where you want to go? Oh, we, oh, we're going somewhere. Lord, Chloe had pulled the beanie off her head and tugged it down over her eyes. Over my eyes. Okay, yeah. As soon as we got into the truck. I'd wanted to pull it off, but she levied the vague threat of swift retribution against me. Remembering all the retaliatory pranks she had unleashed on those who had dared to oppose her in childhood, I decided to play along. Even with my eyes covered, I had felt the excitement radi radiating off of her for the entire drive. I can't deny I'm eager to see what Chloe has in store when the truck finally rolls to a stop. Sit tight. I hear the car door open and close. Then a moment later, I feel the door on my side open. She leans across my body, unbuckling my seatbelt for me and wrapping a hand around my elbow to guide me out of the cabin. I stumble anyway, my clumsiness trumping Chloe's best efforts to help me. She catches my weight against her body, steadying me with one hand on my hip, the other still gripping my arm. Oh my god. <laughs> Whoa there! Sorry. I can feel myself blushing, for once grateful that the beanie obscures so much of my face. You okay? Her voice is so close and quiet. The gentle pressure of her fingers against my hip makes my heart beat faster, and I nod dumbly. You ready? I can hear the excitement in her voice. A fluttery feeling looms in the pit of my stomach. I'm excited, too. Yeah. Chloe yanks the beanie off my head and I squint against a sudden explosion of light. I knew it was going to be the junkyard! Lord almighty! Nax says, oh. I look around, taking in the heaps of rusted metal, the scraggly weeds, the towering evergreens looming in the background. It's... A <laughs> dump! Well, let's be nice. It's amazing. Wow, Chloe. It's dorky, but I'm actually kind of awestruck by the atmosphere of the place. I'm not! There are so many things around. Old vehicles, decommissioned signs, busted appliances, everything with its own story, each piece a unique offering. It probably smells like shit too, Max! This is perfect! Chloe beams at me, shoving her hands in the back pockets and rocking back on her heels. You think so? Yeah. God, I could get so many cool shots here. I'm so glad you can see it, you know? The potential here. Chloe trails off, looking thoughtful. After a beat of silence, she turns around, fixing me with a mischievous smirk. Let me show you around. Chloe takes off with a little skip, <laughs> grabbing the sleeve of my sweater and pulling me behind her. She leads me on a whirlwind tour around the yard. We weave between stacks of rusted-out car bodies, pick our way carefully through jagged metal and broken glass, around a field of dented metal drums and old tires and rebar. You know, it's really, uh... Yeah, I'm starting to see the appeal here. It doesn't take long for me to start to understand just what Chloe loves about this place. There's a sort of serenity here among all the wrecks and the refuse. It's kind of beautiful. Chloe drags me over to an old trawler and offers to boost me up over the side. I decline. That thing looks tenuous waiting to happen. Oh, tetanus waiting to happen. But Chloe just shrugs and hauls herself up over the side with a cheerful disregard for her own personal safety. She struts around the top of the boat, posing and flexing, mugging for the camera like the charismatic jerk she is when I fall back to snap a few photos. Oh no! It's the Dread Pirate Bluebeard, here to plunder Arcadia Bay. Arr! Chloe's pirate impression is as, is as hilariously bad as ever, and I can't help but laugh. Chloe rolls her eyes, offended, and casually flips me off. Shut up, landlubber. Don't think I won't make you walk the plank. She walks to the tip of the bow and kicks over a chair, propping a leg up on the upturned seat. Fuck that bluebeard shit. Call me Captain Morgan. Oh god. I snap another photo, grinning. Captain Morgay. Oh boy! She laughs and hops down without warning, tossing me one of the metal curtain rods she had had been waving around atop the trawler. What's this? 
Your sword, on guard! She takes a slow swing at me and I react on instinct, deflecting the blow with my curtain rod and leading us into a full-blown sword fight. So cute! She swings again and I react on instinct, deflecting the blow with my curtain rod. And it's bizarre because we've done this dozens of times. We're grown-ups now, but somehow playing pirates with my best friend is still easier than breathing. Uh, Max, I don't know about that. I don't, that's a stretch. For as much as she's changed, for all the hair dye and the tattoos and the weed smoked and the occasional bad attitude, there are things about Chloe that are just fundamental. Oh, this is my favorite. Like, she can still make the dumbest, goofiest shit still seem fun and exciting. Her eyes still makes my heart skip. Oh, her laugh. Why'd I say eyes? Whoa! Freudian shit going on. Why'd I say eyes? Wow. Her smile still warms me up from the inside. And she still gets way too cocky in a sword fight, leaving herself wide open. I feign to the right, almost feeling bad when she lunges predictably away, defense slipping. Almost. Chloe's eyes widen as my next swing comes down. She knows she's going to get sent straight to Davy Jones's locker. Frantically, she tries to dodge, but ends up tripping over a stack of tires and landing right on her ass. Damn it! She sinks back into the pile of reverend defeat, breathing heavily. I grin, feeling a trickle of sweat roll down my temple. Hey, Chloe, maybe we should stop. You're looking pretty... Max, don't say it. Tired. Chloe groans and rolls onto her side. Slowly, she pushes herself up to a standing position, patting down her pockets. I'm not high enough to deal with this right now. Come with me. She leads me around a cinder block shed, along some train tracks, and back into the junkyard to a clearing behind the school bus. Chloe hops onto the hood of an old car, patting the spot next to her and sparking up a joint. The metal is warm from the sun as I take my seat behind her. Beside her, rather. We're sitting so close I can feel her pinky brush against mine on the hood of the car. Tentatively, I reach over and hook my finger over hers, watching the slow smile that spills across her face in response. I'm really glad you wanted the, you wanted me to help you, Max. I already told you, there's no one I'd rather have helping me with this. Chloe speaks through a puff of smoke, looking out toward the trees. I know. Not just because of that, though. I knew you'd be busy with this project for the rest of the week, and I really wanted to spend time with you. Max, I'm leaving. What the hell? Where are you going? No! I want to end it now! No! No! I feel like all the air has been sucked out of my lungs. What? Chloe winces and takes a hit off the joint to buy herself some time. I need to get out of here. I'm so sick of this town. I'm taking off at the end of the week. I just need to go someplace else for a while. You're leaving? Only for a couple of days? Or weeks? Look, I'm not sure exactly, but I'm coming back, all right? Oh, uh, I want to say you can't do that, but that's not fair. Like, I can't. Without the time travel powers, I especially can't tell her what to do. Bullcrap. All right. I'm going to say it anyway. You can't do that. Chloe, what the hell? You can't just leave. Chloe slides down the hood of the car, dragging the smoldering tip of the joint along the metal to stub it out. She spins on the balls of her feet as soon as she hits the ground, leveling a glare at me. Yeah, Max, I can. I am. She pops her elbow, like a challenge, mouth twisted into a scowl. My heart catches and I'm so mad for a second! Chloe and I don't fight often, but for a good reason. She's the only person who's ever been able to get under my skin quite like this. I open my mouth, ready to argue again, and then I notice it. Chloe's hands tremble, just barely, when she goes to the truck the- when she goes to truck tuck the unfinished joint into her pocket. I pause flicking my eyes back up to her face. She's still staring me down, ready to raise hell, but anger was always easier for Chloe than fear. I think about her nervous admission in the diner, the hesitancy in her voice when she told me she was leaving, and I know that my reaction now could break her. Okay. Okay, I can wait. Chloe's face goes slack with surprise, before her defenses come back up. 
She shifts nervously in place, the look she's giving me now still wary, but less certain. What? I take a deep breath and pat the empty space next to me. Get back over here. Come on. She hesitates, gnawing her bottom lip nervously. Chloe, please. Reluctantly, she takes a seat beside me again, propping her heels up on the front bumper and draping her arms across them. I want to fight with you, Chloe. So if you're really leaving, let's not spend our time together that way, okay? Okay. I've never been out of Arcadia Bay, Max. Sometimes it feels like I'll never be able to. And that's terrifying. I don't expect you to really understand. But I need you to trust that this is what I need right now, okay? It's rare to see Chloe so earnest. I smile despite the lump in my throat, tightness in my chest. Okay. Chloe slumps forward a little, relieved, and I finally get how tense she was before. This must have been eating her up. I reach out and take her hand again as she perks up a little, shooting me a small but earnest smile. Guess we better get to school, huh? I smile back, squeezing her hand as she slides off the hood of the car and pulls me to my feet. Guess so. Her hand in mine is warm. I hold it for as long as I can. Ah! This is so good! Oh my god. Okay, what? Okay, two things. Two things, and then I'll, I'm done, I promise. Um, one is that the people who are making this fan game, this fan visual novel, are absolutely delightful. They're wonderful people, and I chatted with them a little bit on Tumblr. You should follow their Tumblr. Love is, love is strange. Gosh, the end. Um, they're really, really nice, and they're doing this all for free, and they're going to make this demo free, like, available for everybody, uh, you know, they can't charge any money for it, but, um, I really, I encourage you to play this, I encourage you to tell other people about it, because just from playing the demo, what was that, a couple of minutes, um, I can tell you that this is pretty close, if not exact, to my own, uh, childhood queer experience, you know figuring myself out and sort of liking someone that I didn't know if they liked me back and it was really uh, it was a terrifying but exhilarating kind of time in my life and I really encourage you to give this a try even if you're not queer yourself um, hopefully if we spread this as much as we can other people especially young people who are still kind of struggling with uh, their identity and figuring themselves out I think these types of fan creations are so important and it's really just it's so wonderful I'm getting a little uh, emotional right now it's just so wonderful that this is like available and that people can play this and um, it's so accessible so yeah thank you so much for stopping by I hope you enjoyed my <laughs> dramatic reading of love is strange and then when the full game comes out you can bet your bottom dollar that I'm gonna be playing the entire thing with all romance options so tell me in the comments who would you romance if you had a choice of Chloe, Rachel, Victoria, Kate? I believe that's it. Is that it? Hold on, let me check. Yeah, Chloe, Rachel, Kate, Victoria. If you could choose one of them to romance as Max, who would it be? Drop it in the comments. And thank you so much for stopping by, Fanbite Crew. I'll see you later.